Hi, my name is Stefan Jonsson. I'm a level designer and this is my C Sharp scripting showreel for prototypes I have made in Unity. This is a tower defense game I have scripted. Minions will be spawning from the left, which will run along a path to enter the middle square. The player will lose 1 of 20 life for each minion that enters the middle. The player must stop the minions by building towers that will shoot them down. There are two kinds of towers, ray towers and projectile towers. Ray towers targets a minion and fires a constant ray of damage, dealing damage every half second. Projectile towers, on the other hand, fires a projectile. I also made a damage and resistance system based upon the elements. Earth is brown, fire is red, water is blue, light is white, and normal is grey. The towers have damage based on this system, and each wave of minions are color coded with these five colors. If a red fire minion would be attacked by a blue water tower, it would deal extra damage. If you think of the system as an expanded rock paper scissors, you get the idea. With this system I wanted some additional dynamics, so I added support for upgrading towers of the same kind but with another element. This means that you can combine damage types for a single tower. As a visual representation for this, I made color nodes on each tower which are accordingly divided between the nodes. Whenever a tower is built, it costs gold. Gold is earned in two ways. Firstly, when you kill a minion, you get bounty gold. The second way is income, which has a timer that gives the player an amount of gold every 30 seconds. As the player passes through the levels, the right combination of towers must be built with an escalating difficulty that scales the HP and the armor of the minions in the same pace as the player's defense gets stronger. To figure out the right numbers for this, I used an excel chart in which I stuffed all the variables and made a diagram, which exponentially showed level by level how much gold the player earned and how much all the variables were changed. After the excel chart I punched the numbers into the game and tweaked them a little. Then I considered my prototype finished. This is a prototype that were to be an Amnesia the Dark Descent clone which is a first-person horror game. As the player walks through the corridor, a series of events are triggered using trigger boxes. For example, the painting's gravity was turned on whenever the player hits the first trigger box. Further, the books in the shelf were simply pushed down using an invisible box when the corresponding trigger fired. Now that the spectre arrives through the door, it enters a series of trigger boxes, which corresponds by pushing down books and blowing out candles. As the player reaches the dead end and the spectre is just about to attack the player, it vanishes and the player must then continue to the next room. This is a prototype of a game concept I wanted to try out. I got inspiration from the ice cave puzzles in the Pokemon games. In these caves, there is mostly ice and some strips of land. Whenever the player steps on the ice, she will keep on sliding until a wall is hit. And if the player would then take a step in any other direction, the player would keep on sliding in the same way. Now, my idea was to use these mechanics and make a coop game out of it. I also added gates and buttons to the game. Buttons will open gates when stood upon, either permanently or temporarily. The hardest part of this was to create ice and the walls. I tried many ways of doing this, but this was my best solution. The ice in this case simply covers a very big area. Whenever the player is inside the area, a bull is set to true, as long as the conditions are met. The places where the player hit a wall and stops sliding is something I call standing spot. 
Logically, a stunning spot is a trigger box that will make the ice not affect the player. The consequence of this is that the player can stand still as long as the player doesn't move. However, if the player tries to move, the ice will override the standing spot and make the player slide in corresponding direction. There is also something I call free walk spots, which is an area where the ice gets overridden completely, thus giving the player the ability to move freely inside the area. My final goal with this is to actually make a game for mobile platforms using these mechanics as a single player game. This is a prototype that is to remind of the games similar to our type. The player is to destroy the big ship by shooting at the weak spots the boss reveals. The player has three weapons for disposal. If the player gets hit by any of the boss weapons, a life is lost. To move around and dodge incoming threats, the player simply moves with the mouse with an absolute input to the ship. The laser weapon is simply two diagonally directed lasers that will damage anything they hit. The second weapon, the blaster, fires off projectiles at a high rate. Last of the player weapons is the homing rockets, which will actively lock onto a new target if its previous target is dead. The big blue projectiles the boss fires has a wave-like projectile path. I made this by just moving the projectile in its facing direction every frame as well as rotating it up and down. Whenever the facing of the projectile reaches a certain angle, it switches to rotate in the opposite direction. This way, I had three easy variables to change in order to tweak how the projectile should move. Move speed, rotation speed, and rotation switch threshold. In the second phase, the player will have to stand in the gaps of the huge lasers in order to fire down the weak spots. To warn the player, I made transparent lasers that would start blinking whenever the boss were to activate them. In between the lasers, the boss spawns suicide bombers, for which I used the same scripts as I had for the player's homing missiles. This is just a part of my portfolio. If you want to see more, check out my website. Thanks for watching.